By December 1814, American and British negotiators in Ghent, Belgium, were in the final stages of treaty terms to end the War of 1812. But before the treaty was finalized, the British planned to make one last thrust from the Gulf of Mexico, capturing New Orleans and giving the British control of the Mississippi Valley. Time, however, proved to be Britain's enemy and America's ally. A huge British fleet under command of Sir Alexander Cochrane was headed for the Gulf, but first waited in the Caribbean for a smaller British squadron, which was delayed by its engagement with the American privateer General Armstrong in the Azores. Time loss? Three days. When Cochrane's fleet and 8,000-man invasion force finally approached from the east of Lake Bourne, an American flotilla consisting of five gunboats under command of Lieutenant Thomas F. Catsby Jones stood in his way. After a brief battle, Cochrane defeated Jones' force, navigated Lake Bourne, and landed invasion troops who made camp just nine miles downriver from New Orleans. But in preparing for and fighting this battle, the British lost another two days. Major General Andrew Jackson, who at first thought the attack would come at Pensacola, Florida, had to rush his troops to New Orleans. When he heard that the enemy had advanced so close to the city, he ordered an attack on the British position. On the night of December 23rd, an American force of about 2,000 men approached the unsuspecting British troops at their camp near the Mississippi River. In the river, the schooner Carolina, under command of Commodore Daniel Patterson, opened fire, throwing the camp into chaos. Shortly thereafter, Jackson's men opened fire and engaged the British in a bloody encounter before they were pushed back to Rodriguez Canal outside the city of New Orleans, next to Chalmette Plantation. The British suffered 275 casualties, the Americans 215. While the British waited for their entire force to arrive, Andrew Jackson's men dug in their position, creating earthworks along Rodriguez Canal. On January 8th, the British began their attack under darkness and a heavy fog. But as they approached Jackson's line, the fog lifted, exposing their ranks to heavy artillery fire. Meanwhile, a British regiment crossed the Mississippi to storm naval batteries manned by militia and turn the guns on Jackson's line. But again, a delay worked against the British. The regiment, running behind schedule, captured the American battery but was ordered to withdraw because the main attack on the other side of the river had stalled. The exposed British soldiers took heavy casualties from the Americans and eventually retreated. Jackson's troops were a collection of men that ranged from free black and Native American troops to Kentucky militia to Navy gunners and U.S. Marines who bravely held their position. The failure to take New Orleans was a shocking defeat for the world's mightiest army. British losses from December 23rd to January 8th totaled 2,450 killed, wounded, missing, and captured. Similar American losses totaled 350 men. The victory in the Battle of New Orleans solidified the contributions of the sea services to national defense and made Andrew Jackson an American hero. America's Navy, keeping the sea free for more than 200 years.